What is photogenie? We tend to associate it with beautiful stars, close-ups of beautiful stars. That's part of it, but there's more. Back in the 19-teens and 1920s, a bunch of French filmmakers and critics were trying to figure out this new art form, cinema. Was it even an art? And if it was, what made it so? Louis de Luc was convinced of cinema's capacity for art, writing in 1917, For a long time, I have realized that the cinema was destined to provide us with impressions of evanescent eternal beauty, since it alone offers us the spectacle of nature and sometimes even the spectacle of real human activity. He posited a term, photogenie, to describe the ineffable qualities that elevated a film to the level of art. In the 1920s, Jean Epstein elaborated on the idea of photogenie, writing many essays that discussed the concept. For him, photogenie was a moment, a flash of ecstasy within a film, caused by a perfect but unpredictable combination of elements. In 1921, he wrote, Until now, I have never seen an entire minute of pure photogenie. Therefore, one must admit that the photogenic is like a spark that appears in fits and starts. In De Luc and Epstein's writings, photogenie is inherently visual, inherently photographic, and they often focused on cinema's ability to expressively construct movement in time. It is also, at its heart, about the act of looking, not just the camera's look, but the spectator's as well. This is why we so often associate photogenie with close-ups of stars. Often in cinema, looking is about desire, and the enigmatic actors draw us to the screen. But photogenie is also about reality, or rather, it's about the reality drawn into being by the photographic image. Jean Epstein says, The click of a shutter produces a photogenie which was previously unknown. The thing that interested early film critics like Louis de Luc was cinema's reliance on a reality existing beyond the screen. As a photographic medium, it could capture everyday reality with an immediacy that was out of reach for art forms like theater and painting. Film theorists have since related photogenie to the Russian formalist concept of defamiliarization, which has as its purpose to make us see in a new light the everyday things that we usually ignore. So while we don't always think of neorealism or documentary when talking about photogenie, these genres frequently draw our attention to quotidian details, and those details sometimes become photogenie. For example, late in the documentary Integrate Silence, the monks go sledding. Having taken a vow of silence, we have few opportunities in the film to hear their voices, and throughout the film we watch them engage in practical or spiritual tasks. But when they go sledding, they laugh. The laughter breaks the silence, and we hear their voices as an expression of joy. The priest's laughter is photogenie. Perhaps the moments in this video essay are only photogenie to me. Perhaps they do not resonate with you, because, finally, photogenie is subjectivity. Which isn't to say that it doesn't exist. Sometimes people seem to argue that if something is subjective, it's not real, or that a person's individual perceptions lack value. Photogenie is real, but it exists between the viewer's look, the camera, and reality. That intersection is where cinema art happens. I'm Laura Ivins. Thank you for watching.